base video is about Neptune 280 and also 140, though we have the 280 here, which is basically a beefed up uh, Sidon water cooler on steroids. On front of the box we have a nice picture of the unit and then there's the name Neptune 280L. 280 is the radiator dimension and L stands for the thickness. Thickness is 30 millimeters, so this is a thick radiator, really high performance radiator. You can see the pump and water block right here, cooler master logo in the center and there's an LED, a white LED, so it glows pretty cool in your case as well. You can see that the tubing is really thick, it's the same FEP tubing, so it's really durable and it doesn't let the water condense out of the unit. That's really important so this unit lasts really long. You have ultra fine micro channel, so it has a really really fine micro channel water block, really good for the performance as well, and it's maintenance free. This is a two year warranty unit. On the side of the box we see the specifications and all the platforms it's compatible with. Pretty much everything out there in the market, plus some older platforms in case you still have an older system. The radiator is out of aluminum and the uh, airflow ratings, all the information here, rifle bearing fan. These are actually Jetflow 140 fans, though this is the basic version as you can see. Still very nice fans, really good. And you can see the power consumption is 2.9 watts for the pump and around 10 watts for the fans maximum. So this whole unit consumes less than 10 watts on average. On the back of the box we see all the main features translated into 8 languages. Please don't feel offended if yours is not among them. And we have some nice technical drawings of the unit, the water block and the radiator. So for the modders out there this is really interesting and uh, also if you want to make sure this is compatible with your case this is good. And next to it we have a performance test chart. We can see that with the Neptune 280 and the 140 you get about the same performance at stock speed with 4770K Haswell CPU. And compare this to the stock cooler that comes with the CPU, you get up to 81 degrees running links. And with the Neptune 280 or 140, you get almost half of that. Here we see the unit again, close up. You can see the Jetflow 140 basic fans here with the rubber pad to uh, help against noise and vibrations. You see the thumb screws, you don't even need a screwdriver to install these fans and remove them. You have the radiator here, 30 millimeter, pretty thick. Nice and big 280mm and you can see the tubing, the FEP tubing, really durable. It's a little bit hard to bend it around but you won't be able to break it and you won't be able to bend it so there's no more water going through it. So this is, this is really sturdy good stuff. And here you have the water block itself. And as you can see you can actually move the tubing around, not 360 degrees but it gives you enough room to adjust the tubing and make it really nice in every direction however you install it in your system. You see all the accessory, all the extra parts you need to install it in your system. So first you have to choose if you have an AMD system or Intel system. Most of you should know this and then you use those four screws to secure this to the water block itself. Next up, if you have a Socket 2011 system, your motherboard has a really strong backplate already on the backside. So you don't really have to install the backplate. You just screw these little standoffs onto the backplate that's on the motherboard already. Otherwise, Intel or AMD platform, you need a stronger backplate to, to really get stronger support for the water block and to get the best performance out of it as well. Higher mounting pressure means better performance. So you see this is one universal mounting plate, AMD or Intel on the other side, there you go. And you have these pins that go through the motherboard and these little four holders to secure them. I'm going to show you how to secure those pins on the back plate with these plastic holders later. And the final step of course, you use these nuts to secure the water block and hold it in place. There are thumb screws, sort of, so you don't even need a screwdriver, but it's better to use a screwdriver and get the best pressure. Here we have the Asus Ultimate 4 Sabertooth 990FX Revision 2.0. So this is a really nice AMD motherboard and as you can see it comes with a backplate already. But since we have our own custom backplate and it's much stronger, you have to remove this one. So that's what we're going to do. Sure, it's perfectly clear. Let me show you how to install the backplate. Right now you see it says Intel. So what you see is what you get. If you turn it around, you see AMD, that's what you get. So if you want to install an AMD motherboard, make sure you see AMD right here. If you install an Intel motherboard, make sure you see Intel right here. We have an AMD motherboard, so we're going to install it this way around. You can see that the pins have a little bump right here so they don't rotate freely. And this is, uh, you have to align this with the bracket. You have to slide this in here, make sure it's really all the way in. And then you use the plastic holder this side, put it on there to hold it in place. First we open the CPU. 
socket and such, and we place our lovely FX8350 CPU in here, and we make sure that the gold corner aligns the triangle right there in the bottom. Here we go. Close the socket, and then we use the internal plate. Of course, we use the Cooler Master Thermal Auto Extreme Fusion X1. Right there. Same thing for the Intel brackets. We're gonna install these with these four screws here, and you can see that there's three different options that you can move the pins to depending on which socket you're using. To show you how to install the Neptune 280 on an Intel platform, we have a beautiful, beautiful ASOS ROG Maximus 6 Extreme right here. So, on this motherboard, when you want to install the backplate, just to make sure there's no misunderstanding whatsoever, when you want to install on an Intel platform, you have to see Intel right here facing up. Mounting holes for different Intel platforms are different. There's three options here how you can align the pins on the back plates. So the outermost that we have right now, this is for 1366. This is for 1155 and 1150, including the latest one for Haswell. And there's one for 775 as well in case you're rocking a really, really old motherboard platform. Since we're using an 1150 motherboard, we adjust it into the medium position and then just place it on the back of the motherboard carefully. Push the pins through the motherboard holes, here we go, hold it in place, flip the board over, and there we go. First you have to remove the protective cover from the CPU socket. This is in place to prevent the socket, the pins in the socket from bending and getting damaged. Then you pull out the lever like this, and open the socket. Then we take our CPU, and we have a very nice one. We have a 4770K, that's the fastest Haswell CPU you can get right now, fully unlocked. You can overclock it to 5 GHz if you're lucky. And close the socket, push the lever down, there we go. Now we need some thermal paste, and of course we use the Cooler Monster Extreme Fusion X1. Thermal paste. There we go, that's about enough. There's not too many cases on the market with support for 280 radiators, so we went ahead with the Neptune 280 and put mounting holes for 240 on there as well. So any case that has enough spacing and only has the mounting holes for 240 is still going to be able to hold a Neptune 280. There you go. Another cool thing about the mounting holes on Neptune radiators is that you can install 120 fans as well. If you don't have nice 140 fans, you don't have to get rid of your nice 120 fans and get 140 fans. You can actually use the good 120 fans you have already. So there's eight short screws, really, really short screws. There's eight standard screws and there's eight slightly longer screws. These are useful because some cases have a slight bump on top of the mesh. So the short screws, the normal screws won't be able to reach through the mesh and then go through the fan into the radiator. The really short ones are interesting because you can actually see that on these screws, there is a thread on the top. So you can actually install the fan on the radiator like this. And then you can use the really short screws to reach through the mesh from the outside of the case and install the fans with the radiator from the outside like this. So let's get the case ready for installing then. 